Okay, we haven't even started the NFL draft. We're already looking ahead to next year. We want to know, do we want this year's guy or next year's guy? I don't know. Do we I'm want going to go with this year's guy. Bright, you want Bryce Young or you want Caleb Williams, who's not available yet? Last year, salty. we were all talking about if Will Anderson was available, he was going to go number one overall last year. And now he's available. He's not going to go number one overall. Let's take a look at how we rank our quarterbacks this year compared to next. Quarterbacks on the left are going to be drafted tonight. Uh, they are ranked at CBSSports.com as part of our draft prospect rankings. On the right, Tom Fornelli put together this list of five quarterbacks for us. Caleb Williams, far and away the number one next season. And Josh Pate's going to swoop on in and answer some questions for us. Josh, uh, thanks for joining us. Let's start at the very top of things. Bryce Young, he's going to go number one. Overwhelming favorite now, and our Jonathan Jones says it's going to happen. He's going to the Panthers. Or Caleb Williams, if he were available right now, who would you take? Probably Caleb Williams. I know that's really, really popular to say right now. Um, Christopher, he's got the attributes, to me, that Bryce Young has. He's got more size, which is the thing that I guess people would hammer home relentlessly if Caleb Williams was available right now. There's this, there's this tendency that I've noticed some of the college football public has that if you play for Lincoln Riley or if you play in the Pac-12, they sort of downgrade you as lesser than. And it's always a case-by-case thing. And with Caleb Williams, the fact is if Caleb Williams played in the SEC, he'd light up the SEC. He's really that good. You saw in the Pac-12 championship game, he gets hurt against Utah, and it totally rewrote last year's playoff picture and Pac-12 championship picture because if, if he doesn't get hurt, I believe they win the game. And if they win the game, they're in the playoff. And I don't know what would have happened once they got in the playoff. But we could be totally singing a different tune about not only Williams, but about Lincoln Riley. So he needs to stay healthy this upcoming year. But other than that, man, I've, I've gotten to watch him in person. I went out there and saw Southern Cal play UCLA. That is something that is worth the price of admission if you get a shot to do it. Williams almost certainly would be number one on this year's board. You see he's number one on next year's board. Here's what's interesting. The name DJ Uyangalale is not there. And two and a half years ago, all of us in the recruiting world looked at DJ and said, ooh, DJ, uh, Caleb Williams, boy, what a loaded quarterback crop. That'll be three years from now. So it's funny how many things change. Great point. And, and as we mentioned off the top, last year at this time, it would have been Will Anderson. Slam dunk, number one overall pick last year. He was good last year for Alabama. Had he sat out, maybe he would be number one this year. Who knows? Let's go. Let's match up the, the, the number two quarterback this year with the number two quarterback next year. It's C.J. Stroud, who's tumbled down some draft boards. He might not be the number two quarterback off the board tonight against Drake May of North Carolina. I've heard a lot of this talk about C.J. Stroud. It reeks of the N'Kobe Dean talk last year for different reasons. So I hated the N'Kobe Dean slide last year. I am going to hate the C.J. Stroud slide if it happens. And if it happens because of some test that most people criticizing him for had never heard of three months ago, I'll really hate it. But be that as it may, we don't need to go back far, Chris. All we have to do is go back to the college football playoff. C.J. Stroud did what people like me had begged him to do for a long time, and that is use his full skill set in a high-level football game. They lost against Georgia. It wasn't because of C.J. Stroud. And so if you can guarantee me that I get that style, that caliber of play out of him, uh, the sort of over-the-cliff mentality, the the face-in-the-fan mentality, the willingness to use his legs to extend plays and extend drives, he's got all the other stuff. I have no question about his accuracy, his poise, his his timing. I don't have a question about any of that stuff. If I were to be guaranteed that I get that from him, I'd take him over Drake May. But I don't know if I'm guaranteed that, so maybe that's why he fluctuates a little bit. But Drake May, the thing about him is you'll notice most people know who he is, Chris, but far fewer people have watched him at any length. And that's because North Carolina has not played in a ton of high-profile games. Like, People like us have seen him, but the general public has seen highlight version of Drake May. And they also play a level of competition over there, even though it is Power 5 football, where there's just so much that is have, it's had to be left to the imagination or, or left to the draft evaluation analyst, if you will, the, the Priscos and Wilsons of the world. I got to listen to them to see what the NFL perspective is on Drake May. Because being here on the college side of the fence, 
I'm kind of curious, like, what do the next level guys think about Drake May? This year, obviously, is pivotal for him. There were a lot of folks, let me remind you, on a day that Tyler Buckner has transferred to Alabama, there were a lot of folks over the winter who thought Drake May may transfer to Alabama, and we would be looking at Drake May and the Alabama Crimson Tide this year. Well, he's still at North Carolina. That draft profile is still going to be very high regardless. Josh Pate comparing some players who aren't yet eligible for the NFL draft to guys who are going to be drafted in the first round tonight. So let's go Marvin Harrison Jr. I, I've seen some early mocks for next year that have him as a top five selection. He's a wide receiver out of Ohio State. Let's pit him against every wide receiver in this year's draft. Who are you taking? I take him. I think he's better than any one of them that we've seen come out the past few cycles, only because there's nothing he doesn't do. And he's in a loaded room up there in Columbus, Ohio. And from the moment he walked in there, even amongst, it's like walking into a room full of redwoods, just the best in the business at what they do are seemingly all just packed into that Ohio State wide receiver room since he came in there. Everyone up there has said, hey, Harrison's a little different now. Obviously, you've got the bloodlines there, but he's carved out his own uh, style of play. And when you compare him to Jackson Smith and Jigba, I think the versatility is what would put him over the top, not just against JSN, but against pretty much any other quarterback or uh, wide receiver rather that we're looking at because you don't, you don't slot him, pun intended, into any one particular role. He can move around. He's versatile. He's got such a technician's craft about his game. He is, he is the version of a wide receiver that normally you have to wait a few years into a guy's NFL career to have. And instead, you got it right now in Columbus, Ohio. Josh Pate, host of the Late Kick podcast. Uh, you've got a perfect advertisement right behind you. We know where to find you in this quote-unquote off-season in college football. Thursdays and Sundays, 8 o'clock Eastern time, live on YouTube and Facebook. The latest episode, Josh focuses on that transfer portal chaos in Colorado for Deion Sanders. Download the CBS Sports app and use our draft tracker to follow everything all throughout tonight, tomorrow, and Saturday in the NFL Draft.